This is what your X5 footage can look like with the right techniques, but this is probably what you're getting right now. The difference? These little pieces of glass right here that most creators completely ignore. I'm going to show you exactly how to transform your X5 footage from amateur to cinematic in less than 10 minutes. So what are ND filters and why do they matter? ND filters are pieces of darkened glass that reduce the amount of light hitting the sensor on your X5. Without ND filters, your X5 is forced to use super fast shutter speeds in order to avoid overexposure. Fast shutter speeds essentially freeze motion in each and every frame. And this creates that choppy, unnatural look that you see in amateur footage. But with ND filters, we can slow down that shutter speed to create natural looking motion blur. The same blur your eyes see in real life. This is often the factor that separates professional looking footage from smartphone looking clips. Now, I was excited to hear when Insta360 announced ND filters for the X5. I have been wanting ND filters for the X-Series cameras for as long as Insta360 has been making them. So Insta360 has three different ND filters to choose from. These are ND16, ND32, and ND64. And each of these ND filters comes in a set of two because you need one for each lens on the Insta360 X5. And each number on the ND filter represents how many stops of light they block. ND16 blocks four stops, ND32 blocks five stops, and ND64 blocks six stops. So next, I'm going to show you how to install the ND filters on your X5. But before you do that, make sure your X5 is on the latest firmware. The latest firmware is needed in order for the camera to detect that you have the ND filters installed. Without it, your footage could potentially look quite bad because your camera's not going to know how to translate the fact that you have ND filters on it. So make sure you update your firmware first. In addition, later on, when you go to reframe this footage, you need to make sure you're on the latest Insta360 mobile app, as well as the latest Insta360 studio app. And when editing footage in the studio app, the only thing you have to do differently is you need to select which ND filter you used. It's going to be in the right hand menu there on the second tab down. So here's how you install the ND filters on the X5. Installing ND filters on the X5 is actually quite simple. So first of all, what you wanna do is you wanna pick one of these out of the tray. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna notice these two clips right here. What you wanna do is you wanna start those off at about four o'clock on here. And you wanna make sure it's even. You wanna twist slowly counterclockwise while pushing in. And you're going to feel them snap into place right there. And then what we wanna do is we wanna do it on the other side as well. We're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna put it on right here and we're going to turn it until it pops into place at about six o'clock there. And a pro tip on that, make sure you install both filters, even if lighting conditions are different on each side. The X5 works best when both lenses have consistent light reduction. And then after you've put the filters on, just do a quick test to try to gently rotate these. These should not move easily. If they don't move easily, you probably got them on correctly. But once we power on the X5, you're going to be able to confirm for sure that the filters are properly attached. Here's how. When we power it on, you're going to receive a prompt that the X5 detected the ND filters. So I put on the ND64 filters, so I'm going to select confirm. If you've put on the ND16 or ND32, the X5 should properly detect that, but if it doesn't, make sure to select the correct one. And then we're going to hit confirm. Now, for the settings that make all the difference, here's what you need to do. And this is where many people mess up with ND filters. So definitely pay attention because I'm going to show you what to do and it's actually quite easy. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure you're in your resolution and frame rate that you want. And by the way, when using ND filters, make sure you have the adaptive tone setting set to off. When not using ND filters, I do recommend that, but when using ND filters, you're not going to be able to get to all the settings that you need in order to get the most out of them. So next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna swipe left from the right hand side. And currently it's probably going to be on auto for you. And this is for the exposure settings, but you want to select the M down here. The M represents manual. The auto mode is simply going to fight against what we're trying to achieve. And you wanna use the manual mode for the best results. Now for a perfect use case of these ND filters and optimal motion blur, you wanna go here and you want to set your shutter speed to one over 60 if you're filming in 30 frames per second like I am. If you're filming in 24 frames per second, you wanna set that to one over 50. And the reason we want the shutter speed twice the frame rate is this fulfills the 180 degree shutter angle. And that basically gives you that proper level of motion blur in your footage 
that's going to be most similar to how the human eye sees motion blur. However, it is important to note that this setting will not always work, especially if you have excessive motion where the camera's getting shaken a lot when you're filming. If there's a lot of vibrations to your camera, this is going to introduce a lot of ghosting and jitter to your footage. And this is because a shutter speed of 1 over 50 and 1 over 60 creates enough motion blur in the scene that electronic image stabilization, in this case flow state, may not be able to properly stabilize this footage after the fact. This will result in ghosting and jitter in your footage. EIS operates by using gyroscopes and accelerometers to detect camera movement, and then it digitally shifts or crops the image to counteract that movement. This works well for quick small movements when you have a fast shutter speed that freezes most of the motion. However, with slower shutter speeds, EIS can't remove the blur that's already baked into each individual frame. It can only reposition frames that are already blurry. No worries though, there is a setting I'll show you in a moment that can still get you great motion blur with ND filters without the jitter and ghosting in the footage. So for now, change the shutter speed back to auto and we're going to revisit this in a moment. And then the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go over here to ISO. You wanna click auto, but then you wanna set this to ISO max 400 max. Now currently this is going to look pretty dark because I have ND64 on and the sun is setting right now and I'm in the woods. So if I was filming in this environment right now, I would want to put on an ND filter that's not quite as strong. In other words, ND64 is filtering out too much light. And here's how we know. When we go back to this screen, if you look at the shutter speed right here, it says 1 over 40. So what it's saying is it's saying it has to slow the shutter speed all the way down to 1 over 40 to kind of get a balanced exposure. I would argue that exposure is still a little bit underexposed. So what that means is we need to go to a less strong ND filter. For ND filter selection, here's my quick reference. If it's a bright sunny day, you're going to need ND32 or ND64. If it's partly cloudy or a soft overcast, you're probably going to need ND16. And if it's very overcast or shady like this in the woods right here, you're probably not going to need any ND filter at all. So the key that you need to know here is after installing the ND filter, you need to check what the shutter speed is when you leave it at auto and an ISO max at 400. If you want to ensure there is motion blur in your footage without jitter and ghosting, you want to see a shutter speed that's at least 1 over 120 and somewhere in the 1 over 120 to 1 over 240 range. That's going to be the safe zone where you can get motion blur without getting jitter and ghosting in your footage in most use cases. But as I mentioned, in this case, because the shutter speed on auto is 1 over 40, we would want to take off the ND64. But if the shutter speed was faster than 1 over 40, let's say that shutter speed was 1 over 480 or 1 over 640 or something higher, we would want to put on a stronger ND filter. So once you have an ND filter on and that shutter speed is hanging out somewhere around 1 over 120, it's time to lock in that manual shutter speed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swipe left from the right again, and we're gonna go over here, we're gonna click M, and we're going to set it to one over 60. And then for the ISO max, we're gonna make sure that's set to 400. And when the ISO max is set to 400, the camera is going to adjust the ISO automatically, but it's going to only adjust it from as low as 100 to as high as 400. Since the point of an ND filter is to get the shutter speed lower, you don't want your camera boosting the ISO to offset that because it's going to just be those settings fighting each other. So once you've set your shutter speed manually to the 1 over 60, what you wanna do is you wanna film a test clip or two in your shooting environment, just to make sure that it's giving you the motion blur you want without giving you the ghosting and jitter. So as you can see in these sample clips right here, when I was walking along with this, I was able to use 1 over 60, and there was very minimal to no ghosting and jitter in the footage. The footage actually looked pretty good, but when I was riding along on a scooter and my selfie stick was getting a lot of vibration and shake to it, 1 over 60 was not good for the shutter speed. There was a ton of ghosting and jitter in there. So I had to use 1 over 120 in that case to get the proper motion blur without the ghosting and jitter. And even though the 1 over 120 is a 90 degree shutter angle, meaning it's four times the frame rate, because our frame rate is 30 frames per second, that footage still had a lot more motion blur than it did without using the ND filters at all. And of course, the other option, as I was indicating here, if you don't want to set your shutter speed manually, you can go back to that and you can hit auto. And then what you wanna do is you just wanna make sure your ISO is still set to 400 max. 
and you will get good results as long as you don't have too strong of an ND filter on such that it's lowering your shutter speed to below the 1 over 120. So those are the two setting pathways to getting motion blur with ND filters. And finally, a very important step. Once you have the ND filters installed, you want to use the lens wipe cloth that Insta360 included with these. And the reason you want to do that is it is basically impossible to get these ND filters on without getting fingerprints on them. That's just the nature of installing them. And what I actually recommend doing is I recommend wiping off the actual lenses on the camera first before even putting these on, just to make sure there's no dust on those either, because any specks of dust or fingerprints, anything like that, they're going to quickly degrade the footage and it's going to look bad. So make sure to wipe down both of these. But first, before we look at the comparisons, I'm excited to announce an amazing giveaway. I'm partnering with Insta360 to give away one Insta360 X5 standard bundle plus an ND filter set to one lucky winner. This contest starts today, July 30th, and ends on Wednesday, August 6th at midnight Eastern time. So check out the link in the description below for how to enter this contest. No purchase is necessary, and one winner will be selected at random. And let me know in the comments below what adventures you would take the X5 on if you win. Next, let's take a look at some comparison footage. So this comparison footage is going to show the real difference that these ND filters make. So first of all, scene number one, no ND filter, and everything is in auto mode. This is what most people get straight out of the box with their X5. Now, do you notice how every movement there looks a little bit frozen and choppy? Your brain knows something's off, even if you can't pinpoint exactly what it is. Next, this is scene number two. This is with the ND64 on the X5 and the proper manual settings that I just showed you. This footage is immediately more cinematic, and the motion blur really creates that smooth, natural feel. And this, of course, is how your eyes see motion in real life. But here's where it gets interesting. With scene number three, I took the original choppy footage and I added motion blur later on in the Insta360 Studio app. Now the software did an okay job, but if you look closely at the edges, especially around moving objects, you can see artifacts and unnatural blur patterns. The motion ND filter in the Insta360 Studio app is better than nothing, but it's clearly artificial. And looking at all three side by side here, the difference is dramatic. The ND filter has the organic motion blur that software simply can't replicate. So here's what you need to remember. ND filters aren't just accessories, they're tools to help you get more professional looking footage. Use the double or quadruple your frame rate shutter speed rule, depending upon movement intensity. Choose your ND filter strength based on lighting conditions and always shoot in manual mode for consistent results. Your viewers are going to notice the improvement even if they can't explain exactly why. If this video helped you level up your X5 game, hit that like button and subscribe for more advanced techniques. So what's your biggest challenge with 360 cameras? Let me know in the comments below.